Hello friends, welcome to Aircraft Design Module 3 Initial Sizing of an Aircraft As I started in my previous lecture, there are three phases of aircraft design and the first is conceptual design. To begin in depth of conceptual design, there are certain process for an initial sizing which was proposed by Lofting in the year 1980. That procedure has to certified from the FAR regulation. In case of very lightweight, need to certify it from FAR part 23. In case of propeller aircraft and very light jet, need to get certified from FAR part 23. Or in case of jet aircrafts, need to get certified from FAR part 25. Starting with cost effectiveness, aesthetic parameters, comforts, operating efficiency, performance parameters, this all the constraint analysis that helps the designer to obtain the critical parameters. Critical parameters like weight of the aircraft, aerodynamic efficiency of the aircraft, wing loading, thrust loading, thrust loading or power loading for the new design that will satisfy all the customer's performance requirement. So this initial sizing followed by a powerful method called trade study. Now it helps to solve many engineering problems. Now what is trade study? It is a formal tool that supports a decision making with considering the requirements comparing with the all the relevant aircraft. For an example, uh, now in the previous lecture we had designed a large passenger aircraft. Let me consider the same example. Uh, a large passenger aircraft, civil transport aircraft. Now we have followed few regulations that is FAR part 25. Let's consider the same design requirement that I have discussed in the previous module that is Mach number 0.85 range 15,000 km. Let's consider the passenger capacity about uh, 400 passengers and mission duration will be approximately 15 hours and with a least takeoff and landing distance. Now, based on the trade study, we need to determine the relevant aircrafts with a nearby meeting the objects or the mission of an existing aircraft. Now, based on our example, we have considered the large passenger aircraft considering the number of passengers of whose passenger capacity of 400. Now, if you look into few aircraft, here I have taken six aircrafts, uh, Airbus 380, Airbus 340, Airbus 330 and Boeing 787, 777 and 747. So now we will study this six aircraft thoroughly. Now you can see here in this uh, literature survey of the six aircrafts, here what I have satisfied my requirement. See, almost all the aircraft having the same speed. Now, second, it is almost ranging within this 15,000 km. And second criteria is the passenger capacity is almost ranging between within 400. Now, you can see I have considered few aircrafts which is having higher than 400 and less than 400. Similarly, for the speed plus and minus of 0.85 Mach number. Similarly, for the range, the 15,000 km is our design requirement, but I have considered plus and minus of that range. Now, these are the critical criteria or critical requirements to design your own aircraft. Now, in order to create a successful conceptual design, to satisfy this requirement, we need to find out the number of parameters to be optimized. Now, there are two main criteria for optimization. First is measures of effectiveness and measures of performance. 
measures of effectiveness can be done based on customer's point of view and measures of performance based on engineer's point of view so what it says in measurements of uh, customer is it comes under what is the amount of payload what will be the speed what will be the cargo capacity what will be the advanced technology schedule time life cycle etc whereas measurements of performance it helps to ensure that that how effective that measurements has been satisfied by the engineers by means of how uh, minimum gross weight how minimum power consumption how you are improving the specific impulse how you are improving or enhancement of um, landing and take off performance and so on so basically trade study depends on the assumptions the criteria made by the teammates so here i will show you a graphical method to filter the important parameters how to obtain the gross weight uh, empty weight fraction aspect ratio wing loading thrust loading aerodynamic efficiency from this large passenger aircraft and we will optimize it we will find some more extra parameters we'll look into it so uh, first what i have done is i have opened the excel in the excel you can see after opening it uh, you can see six aircrafts and few important parameters starting from the crew to the number of passengers length gross weight empty weight fraction fuel capacity cargo weight to the thrust loading so first i have plotted and uh, noted the important points uh, please note one more point here in my design criteria it is uh, maximum speed is 0.85 mach number and range is 15000 km and the passenger is 400 passengers so keeping in that mind my selection criteria should be within plus and minus so you can see i have highlighted the mach number range and the passenger so based on that what i will going to do is first i'm going to find out uh step by step uh first i will plot a graph between speed versus range in that x axis it is a speed and the y axis we have the range in between we have after plotting we have got the scattered points after the here the main motto of plotting the graph between the velocity and the range is to check the customer the value which they have given about the range whether it is within the feasible limit or the not maybe you are designing some aircraft so you have to check whether the criteria which you are considering for designing for your own aircraft whether it is feasible or not for checking the feasibility we are going to plot a graph between velocity versus range so first we are going to plot a graph so from our design requirement is again 0.85 so near about that particular zone i am first drawing the circle from the circle i am going to draw a vertical line from that 0.85 in the near about to that 15000 and you can see that which is within the proper uh, Uh, circle is called as an optimum circle or optimum range so the customer requirements is not invalid it is a completely a feasible one it is can be designed within this particular limit moving to the next next we are going to plot a graph between the maximum velocity versus gross weight now uh, again we are plotting the graph we got a scattered points everywhere around the graph and uh, you can see from here again we are going to draw a circle optimum range which is uh, located nearby 2.85 mach number from here we are going to draw first uh, vertical line till the center of the circle then a horizontal line till the y axis now the line which is subtended or coinciding in the y axis uh, that particular value will be the optimum gross weight for this initial sizing of the weight 
Moving to the next is our maximum velocity versus empty weight fraction. Here we are going to plot a graph between the speed versus empty weight along the y axis it is a empty weight. So basically as per the thumb rule uh, empty weight should be ranging from 0.3 to 0.7. Okay, so here you can see the for the large passenger aircraft which is lying within 0.4 to 0.6 within 0.4 to 0.6. Now again I will locate my requirement that is a 0.85. I will draw a circle uh, within this 0.85. I will draw a vertical line along the center of the circle, and from that point I will draw a horizontal line from the till the y axis and the value which is coming along the y axis that is my optimum value optimum empty weight fraction moving to the next is a wing loading wing loading plays a very very important role for predicting the performance of an aircraft so if an aircraft having a low wing loading that means it is having a large wing area when compared with the high wing loading Okay, so one more criteria is if if there is an increase in wing loading, then it will also increase the takeoff and landing distance. So higher the wing loading also decrease the maneuverability. So here we have to carefully choose. Now here we have plotted a graph between velocity versus wing loading. Now after plotting the graph between uh, velocity versus wing loading you can see there are some points three points are located nearby and we can make an optimum range within that you can see I have marked with a range of red circle and one is a blue circle. Now here the thing is you have to choose according to this concept if you increase the wing loading it will increase your takeoff and landing weight. So accordingly you have to decrease that uh, your takeoff and landing distance. So you have to choose the lower range of your takeoff and landing distance. So also it will help to improve your maneuverability. So accordingly so what I am going to do is I am going to select the best or minimum optimum value. Within the circle you can take any one of the parameters that is within the lower or the higher. The main thing is you can take any appropriate value based on the justification. You can take any value within the circle but not outside of the circle. So within the circle it is an optimum zone. So coming to the next is a plotting a graph between maximum velocity versus aspect ratio. So here again the same thing we first we will get the optimum zone which is ranging within nearby uh, points. So after that we will draw a vertical line from the 0.85 Mach number from the center of the circle. I am taking an optimum and average value uh, from the um, from the optimum circle. So from that point. Uh, center I will take an horizontal line from the horizontal line I will take and take the optimum value as optimum aspect ratio considering the next is a finest ratio now it depends on aircraft to aircraft that you're designing now here I'm preferring to choose an finest ratio and some cases you can also choose gliding ratio you can choose rate of sink you can choose rate of climb so based on the aircraft to aircraft based on the parameters you are getting it you can optimize it now here uh, finest ratio plays a very important role to reduce the drag of an aircraft so I am going to predict that what is the finest ratio I am going to initialize for my particular aircraft. So again the same method I am first going to fix my optimum range from that uh, speed that is 0.85 I am drawing going to draw a vertical line till this uh, mid of the circle from the mid of the circle again I am going to draw a horizontal line till the y axis and that particular value will be my optimum finest ratio and finally I will put that aerodynamic uh, efficiency so you can see again the lift to drag ratio is ranging within 17.5 to within 20.5 for a large passenger aircraft and uh, based on your design criteria that is a 0.85 draw a circle now here you can see here uh, almost it is lying within the 19 to 19.5 so you can draw a domain within this particular parameter and uh, from there you can pick that reasonable value from here
coming to the next thrust loading thrust loading is also plays a very very important role both the thrust loading as well as the wing loading plays a very important role a uh, high thrust loading says that a uh, aircraft will have a high acceleration high thrust and high rate of climb so you can here opt for the higher value so again the same one you can first draw a circle uh, within your um, optimum design requirement see the scatter points nearby locating your design points then from there 0.85 draw a vertical line till the center of the circle or maybe a little bit higher of that based on your interest based on your criteria based it is completely up to you it is completely up to a designer it is completely up to an engineer so based on that i'm going to choose a low thrust loading so i'm going to choose near about from the mid of the circle and uh, draw a horizontal line and we get as around 0.28 about the thrust optimum thrust loading and finally you put that in a tabular column and based on this optimum value further we can proceed for an weight estimation of the aircraft we will see in the next module how to calculate the weight or how to estimate the weight for the entire aircraft so hope you are enjoying this course we will love to have your early feedback so i can improve my uh, teaching skills in my upcoming videos and hope to see you again in the next module thank you so much for watching